Live from the 412, it's Platt's point of view, y'all. Let's go. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Platt's point of view. I'm Platt, and on today's show, we'll talk NFL, a little college basketball, a little college football. I have a young beast that I'll be raving about in our high school spotlight segment. Old school, new school segment is on here. And later on, I'll tell you who needs to turn up and get lit. So let's get started. The Pittsburgh Steelers. It's time to put some respect on the Pittsburgh Steelers' name. You heard me? After two physical bloodbath-style games on the road at Tennessee and at Baltimore, the Steelers stand alone at 7-0 as the only undefeated team in the NFL currently. The offense hasn't been lights out by no means, but Big Ben, but Big ben has shown no effects of being a garbage quarterback on a decline. So far this season, Big Ben Roethlisberger has over 1,600 yards passing, 15 touchdowns, four enters. He's completing 65% of his passing, which is very accurate, with a 99 quarterback rating. The O-line has been solid, and we see another future All-Pro in the making. Rookie guard Kevin Dotson out of Louisiana Lafayette. He filled in for Pro Bowl guard David DeCastro and was magnificent. Running back James Conner, he's played fairly well, and the wide receivers and tight ends haven't missed a beat. Rookie wide receiver Chase Claypool, he's a star in the making. Wide receiver Deontay Johnson is slippery in oil, my favorite, and he's been banged up a little bit, but he's coming along. Juju Smith-Schuster, he reminds me of a new age Heinz Ward. And we can't forget James Washington, who's caught a couple of touchdowns. He has a decent amount of catches, too, and he's been very reliable. And how about the scouting job finding kick returner, punt returner Ray Ray McLeod out of the University of Clemson? Ray Ray McLeod is averaging 16 yards on punt returns, which ranks number one in the NFL. He's averaging 25 yards on kick returns, which ranks, I think, six in the NFL right now. Also, tight end Eric Ebron, he's played pretty good. I like Ebron a lot. As far as the defense, T.J. Watt, certified game record. Tears it up. Game record. Sack specialist. And the D-line looks unblockable. Defensive lineman Stephon Tuitt looks unstoppable. He looks like a man among boys out there. And how about inside linebacker Robert Spillane, who's been solid filling in for the injured Devin Bush? The Steelers recently acquired inside linebacker Avery Williamson from the New York Jets to help out at inside linebacker. The secondary looks fast with very good cover skills. Minka, Joe Hayden, Edmonds, and Steve Nelson, they pretty much held their own. A few mistakes here and there, but that can be easily worked on. Nickelback Mike Hilton, he was looking solid until a shoulder injury sidelined him. He'll be back soon, though. Overall, do not count out the Pittsburgh Steelers. And how about head coach Mike Tomlin's leadership this season? Man, he has these boys balling. Beware, the Steelers are coming, and I think something special is on the rise, y'all. The Pittsburgh Steelers. So next up, let's talk about some top rookies in the NFL that's been balling out. How about quarterback for the Bengals, Joe Burrow? So far this season, Joe Burrow has over 2,200 yards passing, 11 touchdowns, 5 enters. He's completing 67% of his passes with a 91 quarterback ranking, which is fairly good. He's also been sacked 28 times so far this season. He's been getting popped. Burrow has shown mobility, leadership, good pocket presence, and pinpoint accuracy. And poise in the pocket despite playing behind a depleted O-line has been getting him killed. Joe Burrow is on pace to be the most sacked quarterback since David Carr for the Texans years ago. Remember him? Besides that, I really like what I see out of Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's pretty good. Next up, wide receiver Joe Burrow's teammate. Wow, out of LSU. Out of LSU. Vikings receiver Justin Jefferson. This season so far, Jefferson has 31 catches for 563 yards. He's averaging 18 yards a catch with three touchdowns. Jefferson's been destroying any defensive back who's been trying to get physical with him. Justin Jefferson, he just got a knack for getting extra yards after the catch. He's been a pleasant surprise. So look for Justin Jefferson to be Kirk Cousins' go-to guy rather sooner than later. Justin Jefferson, he's coming, man. Another guy, last but not least, strong safety for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Antoine Whitfield Jr. He's looking like his dad out there, former uh, 
cornerback for the Bills, Antoine Winfield Sr. Junior, though, he has 44 tackles, total tackles, 31 solo tackles, one forced fumble, one interception, two sacks, and four passes defended. Winfield Jr. has been balling all season so far for Tampa. He's a versatile defensive back with very good instincts. Tampa Bay Buccaneers D coordinator Todd Bowles loves this kid. He uses him in a variety of ways. He says he's quiet, humble, and he's been nothing but a true professional since he arrived in Tampa. I like Antoine Winfield Jr. a lot. He's a playmaker. College football. The Pac-12 football season is set to resume this Saturday. And I want you guys to pay attention to USC sophomore Keaton Slovis. He was the 2019 Pac-12 Freshman of the Year. He set the NCAA freshman record with a 71% completion percentage. That's very accurate. That's the best ever for a freshman in college football history. He so far, I mean last season, sorry, last season he threw for over 3,500 yards with 30 touchdowns and nine enters. Slovis has a strong arm with very good pocket presence, very good pocket presence and a pinpoint accuracy. So keep an eye on him. He'll probably be shooting up draft boards real soon. He's about 6'2", 205. I like him a lot. And how about Clemson running back Travis Etienne? He recently became the ACC's all-time leading rusher, passing NC State legend Ted Brown's mark of 4,602 yards. Etienne also became the first player in FBS history to score a rushing or receiving touchdown in 42 straight games. This boy's explosive, man. He's a monster. He's right now he's currently rated as the number one running back on draft boards and yeah, look for nothing but success from here on out from him. He's a baller. And also, how about Ohio State quarterback Justin Fields? So far this season, Fields has only seven incompletions. He's completing 87% of his passes with six touchdowns and zero enters. He actually looks better than he did last season. And I thought he played lights out last season. His footwork looks better. I think he's reading defenses better, and he's finding the open players with precision. His arm looks stronger, too. He's got a cannon. So, yeah, Justin Fields, Ohio State. Big Ten football. Keep an eye on him. Watch out, y'all. Next up, let's go to our old school, new school segment. Old school, new school, youngest take notice. Old school, new school, youngest take notice. Old school, new school, youngest take notice. Old school, new school, y'all. Shout out to the L.A. Dodgers, the 2020 Major League Baseball baseball the Major League Baseball champs. And on that note, we're gonna piggyback off of that. And our old school player of the day is old school catcher Mike Piazza. He played 16 seasons, most notably with the New York Mets and the LA Dodgers. He has a career batting average of over 308, 427 homers, and over 1,300 RBIs. He's a 12-time All-Star. He was the National League Rookie of the Year in 1993. 10-time Silver Slugger Award winner, the New York Mets retired his jersey number 31, and he's part of the New York Mets Hall of Fame. He also is a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame. He was inducted in 2016. Mike Piazza has the most home runs for any catcher in Major League Baseball history. Like I said, he has 427 overall, but as a catcher, he hit 396, which is remarkable. Piazza is currently the manager of the Italian National Baseball Team. What a career, Mike Piazza. What a career. New school, Chicago White Sox shortstop Tim Anderson. Anderson was the 2019 batting champ with a 357 batting average. In 2019, he had the lowest walk percentage in the American League at 2.9%. Anderson had a career high in hits with 167 despite having 88 less plate appearances than he had in the 2018 season. This past season, 2020, Tim Anderson had 10 home runs, 67 hits, with a 322 batting average. Tim Anderson has speed. He has an arm. He has very good arm strength, power, quickness, and crazy athleticism. Tim Anderson is only 27 years old, and he should be a household name in Major League Baseball for many years to come. Tim Anderson, Chicago White Sox, new school. Next up, let's go to college basketball. <clears throat> Freshman point guard 
out of Oklahoma State, Cade Cunningham. He's about 6'7", 210 pounds, <clears throat> Cade Cunningham. College hoops will begin later on this month, and I want you to keep an eye on him. Cunningham was the number one recruit coming out of Montverde Academy. He won a gold medal with Team USA in the Under-19 World Cup. Most college basketball experts and basketball experts project Cunningham as the number one pick in the 2021 NBA draft. Kay Cunningham is a very gifted playmaker, as you can see. A big guard who scores in the lane with ease. He has a nice mid-range game and will pull up and hit the three. He can break you down. He can break down defenders off the dribble and find teammates. He's a pretty good rebounder, plays solid defense. Kay Cunningham is extremely talented. I like this guy a lot. Look for him. Look for his name to ring bells in college basketball this season. Kay Cunningham. Yeah, he's going to be that dude. Our high school spotlight. Safety, Donovan McMillan out of Peters Township. He's about 6'2", 190. He's a four-star recruit. He's an all-state safety, and he's rated as the eighth best safety in the country. McMillan is a physical, aggressive safety with great tackling ability. He plays fast. He has solid cover, cover skills. Last year, he had no D1 offers. But his stock rose as college coaches began to see his film. Then the offers, they just start coming in. Oklahoma, Virginia Tech, Oregon, Florida, Texas, and so on. When it was all said and done, McMillan chose the University of Florida to play his college ball and further his education. McMillan is the first local player to commit to an SEC, SEC program since former Central Valley standout Robert Foster committed to Alabama. So keep an eye on McMillan. He's vicious. He's ferocious. He's a tackler. And I like him a lot. I see a little bit of Rodney Harrison in this guy. Now let's turn up and get lit. Turn up and get lit. It's time to turn up and get lit, man. For real. Turn up and get lit. Cam Newton. Cam, your career is on the line. It's time to step up, bruh. You fumbled late in the game against Buffalo. You had your team in scoring position for a win. You know better. You're a veteran quarterback, man. Former MVP, you must play better, Cam. Your time is ticking. The clock is ticking. In due time, Belichick might bench you. He might be had, had enough of you and your shenanigans. I know you don't have the best weapons, Cam, with Julian Edelman hurt and so on, to kill Harry and so on. But you got to make it work, Cam. Cam Newton, I'm rooting for you, man. Turn up and get lit. The time is now, Cam. You got a lot of doubters. People think you can't do it. I'm with you, though, man. We're going to see what you got, man. This is it. That's the last straw, Cam. Let's go, Cam Newton. And that's Plot's Point of View. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Out.